Good morning, good afternoon for everyone. And thank you for having us today here with uh, Neil and Rich from uh, Shoptivity Labs. I'm very happy to have the opportunity to, to talk today about like launching a thriving Shopify store in like 30 days. So I'm looking forward to uh, get some uh, more knowledge and insights from you guys. And uh, let's start with like a short introduction. Uh, Neil, can you go first? Sure. So yeah, I'm Neil Richmond. I'm from uh, Shoptivity Labs. Um, we kind of, we'll talk a little bit more about us and our business. Um, I guess, yeah, so we're, we're really excited to be here. A um, little bit of background, I guess there's something kind of maybe people don't know about me just to kind of get you in the headspace of how crazy we are sometimes. So I, I fly little planes now and again, um, and I was involved in a in a crash in one of them in the Alps a couple of years ago, Eden, and uh, I managed to walk away from it. It was uh, not me crashing the plane, the instructor who was teaching me to fly in the mountains. He, uh, he uh, took the controls and said, I'll land this thing. And we flipped the plane upside down, lost the propeller, a wing and a wheel. And I managed to open the hatch and climb out the top. And we had a, a group of paragliders coming down who ran to our rescue. I just had a few bumps and bruises. And uh, I think that the instructor had some more bruises on his ego than I did. Yeah, that's like a crazy story. And like, yeah, I'm sure that everyone listening to it, like also amazed like that you're here with us. So thank you for that. No worries. <laughs> Rich, how about yourself? Uh, well, as everybody can see, I'm an old man, yeah, and uh, I recently, um, so um, I suppose a fact, fun fact about me, I'm a rugby player, and I was a rugby player for a very long time. Then I got, sort of got old, gave up. I started playing again last year in September, and in my first year, I've managed to break a finger, break a nose, break two ribs, yeah, <laughs> and only played in one game where we've won. <laughs> we've lost every other game yeah so that's good that you guys are here are, are safe and like uh, here in this chat we will not have anything like falling from anywhere so like yeah we can move uh, forward and start like to, to get to know you a bit like uh, from the perspective of, like what does Shoptivity Labs do so basically you know we're on a mission I think mission there you go so we're on a mission everybody's on a mission aren't they yeah we're on a mission uh, to create digital solutions uh, that make e-commerce rock so how our <laughs> sorry no, no. are we okay? yeah, we're good. Yeah. yeah sorry um, um, yeah we're on a mission to make e-commerce rock so basically you know like we focus on three key things so website design APIs, yeah, and that's one of the problems a lot of people have is how to how to create good APIs, how to API into lots of different things, like things like Everflow, yeah, um, and also specialising in you know um, integrations with uh, other things such as potentially you know, like digital marketing platforms, third-party systems, third-party apps, etc. Getting the best out of them, but also choosing the right ones, yeah, stuff that's not going to slow you down, stuff that's not going to affect how you work, stuff that's going to be right for your business. So that's basically us in a nutshell. That's really great. And I think it's a good like uh, recap on the things that you're doing. And if you're looking at like, you know, the reason that you're saying you're in a mission, but what led you to create Shoptivity Labs? Um, it, was, it was very interesting. So we were an applications development company. And we still are. So there is, there's part of us that does applications development. Yeah. But um, COVID happened. Yeah. And although we built shops and we were building e-commerce shops for people, COVID happened, lockdown happened and the e-commerce world exploded. Yeah. Now we had experience of building shops. We were building shops for people. What we realized yeah, was that this market was just growing and growing and growing. But what we also realized, yeah, there was a lack of real expertise there. Not necessarily expertise in the software world, but expertise in Producing a site that actually converts, yeah. Producing a site that does what you want it to do, that meets your business plan. Everyone can build a site. Everybody can slap a theme up, yeah. Everybody can do. Anybody can do stuff like that. But it's about understanding a client's business objectives and then meeting that with a site that's going to deliver what they want. So for us, COVID was an enormous opportunity. And I know a lot of people don't say that, you know, but for us, it was. Yeah, I can imagine. I remember, you know, like yeah, looking at the uh, Shopify stock going like skyrocket, like uh, during COVID, and so many businesses going online. So I think this was a, 
again, as you mentioned, a great opportunity for you. But uh, what type of companies that work with you guys? So, so I guess even we get a broad spectrum of people coming to us. You know, we've got particularly people, the sectors of affiliate marketing. We get B2C people coming to us, particularly international businesses who are doing e-commerce across borders. Um, there's some intricacies there and we can really help with the way that a website will land in one country to another country, and maximize the opportunities in there. Um, startups, they've got an ambition, they've got a plan, they want to get up and running, get out there in the market space. Sometimes not quite a clue where to start or how to start with inside the e-commerce piece. So we have a, a, land, a good slant towards commerciality as well as the kind of the digitalization as well. Um, particularly in vogue at the moment, subscription platforms. We've got a lot of people looking at how they get repeat business back through loyalty programs. So it's really, you know, and again, we get bigger companies who want to migrate away from maybe a platform that they're currently using into a Shopify platform. Again, how can we make that migration seamless to them and actually help them start increasing their scale and their volume of sales? That's interesting. So you have a variety of companies that you work with and you have like different kind of packages, I assume, that you work with them on top of it. But if one asks, like, what is the most popular reason that companies uh, choose to work with you? Well, if I start with that, and Neil will probably interrupt me, you know, as he spent most of the last 25 years doing. Um, so um, basically, you know, like, and, and we deal with a lot of startups who, who are looking for a technology solution that don't know where to start. Yeah, uh, and that helps. But another uh, another reason a, a lot of customers work with us is we can be a fire brigade for these people. So they have problems, they have issues. Yeah, they don't know where to turn. Yeah, they they they've got a current supplier that basically is charging them for every single minute they speak to them. Yeah, yeah. Whereas we're we're much more about a solution. Yeah, and. I think the other thing that, that that we do is when we're talking about bringing innovative digital solutions and and all of this sort of stuff. Yes, we do, but the point is that they they need to match reality. They need to match your business plan. Yeah, it's so easy to flash up a website. Yeah, without it, it being appropriate to what you're trying to do. And I think that's where we we get collaborative. Even so, so, so a lot of the customers who are kind of with us they'll say oh my tech team i can't get hold of them there's something not quite i need to understand this and we try and put things in a plain language we're always there on tap with you know we've got a crew of project managers who interlays with customers and also our devs slightly different they're very willing to jump on a video call and try and put things in lay people's terms we take people on a technology journey and very often you don't see a developer on the screen this way so it's, it's a little bit different with us yeah, yeah, I think yeah, fundamentally yeah. it's about understanding the business, yeah, the customer, and fundamentally understanding what they want. As that, you know, it's about round peg, round hole, yeah. And and a lot of developers, it's round peg, square hole. It's it's like you know, we have a solution which we want you all to buy, <laughs> yeah. And and that's not where we are. It's like we need to work out what type of solution you need and give you that. 100% sometimes, you know, that like uh, we're talking so much about technology, but not about the needs of the team itself. So I think to have this bridge of understanding between the needs and capabilities, this will give you the niche to work with all those teams. So I think this is great. And Rich, you just like point out, you know, the words like problems. And, you know, I think a lot of companies nowadays like trying to do so many things in parallel, but then, you know, some problems occur. So like, what are the signals showing that the e-commerce store is not like launched properly? Sure. So I, I guess you get some red flags come up quite quickly, Eden, you know, so you want the journey, a thousand clicks is what you want on your website, but you know, what if it never actually happens and you don't get a click on that? So kind of some early signs of things like you've got low visitor traffic. So you're just not seeing the numbers hitting your site. And then that follows them with a dismal conversion rate. You know, nothing's coming through on the sales piece. And then you're getting a lot of immediate bounce backs from your home page is another signifier. So, you know, there just aren't numbers failing to add up. You know, there's just silent alarms, you know, of a store that's missed its markup to launch. So it's really listening to kind of what's happening then. I think during our conversation, we talk a lot about data and signals. Yeah, that's totally makes sense. And like, 
For example, we can point out the problems, but we don't understand the impact. What is the impact that you see when those problems occur? Well, yes. Yeah. So I guess you've kind of got a ripple effect, and it, it can, you know, you it brings a bit of complacency if you don't start not spotting these things, or you're unaware. I guess so. If you choose to ignore the early distress signals, you can get a cascade of challenges come at you. So low engagement that changes into poor sales, that saps your marketing resources and erodes the brand credibility. So your marketing team is trying more and more things, and you end up throwing things at the wall to see if something will stick. And left unaddressed, um, what began as kind of a manageable issue can really verge into a crisis and then it stops you being able to scale um, and that becomes very difficult. And it also starts to daunt a lot of business. It's that point where people go, they just get paralyzed at that point and not knowing which way to turn. I think it's very interesting. You know, we, we just touched like the, the signals that we can see that the story is not scaling, understanding the impact. But what about the causes? What are the common causes that like impacting e-commerce store to scalable? Sure. So if we, if we kind of try and look at unraveling some of the knots, maybe it, it's kind of a bit of prevention and cure. So, you know, common roadblocks that stifle e-commerce stores growth stem from three areas. It's technology, strategy and execution. So with your kind of technology hurdles, it's starting with technology. If you choose the wrong tech stack to start with, that's going to cause you a lot of problems. There's some platforms that are pretty rigid in what they do. They can resist integration, skimp on analytics, and they can blindside you um, to emerging friends and customers' behaviors. So it's just making sure you get the tech stack really, really well on there. Um, so you've kind of strategy oversight, strategy overlooking the mobile experience. We always say we start with the mobile first, even in the design. And when we're talking back with customers, we'll always reference back. What does this look like on a mobile? That's really what you need to look at. Um, it's it's just that kind of holistic strategy that invases every touch point of the customer journey. It's not optional. It's imperative. And we know a lot of our customers touch point through that mobile and I, I think there's execution errors. It's kind of last the execution where even the best laid plans can falter. So you've got to be adaptive and be responsive. So getting plenty of pre-test launching in, we, we'll put things through the paces before we even release them to a customer to look at, let alone to set them out into the wide ether to start getting those clicks coming in. Um, and it's getting the customer feedback post-launch. If you choose to ignore it and people are saying, well, this happens when I click this, you should be straight in there saying, well, that's kind of not the journey that I planned for this customer and be on it really, really quickly. Um, customer feedback in the virtual world is as valuable as the customer feedback in the reality world. I understand. And I think that this is like such a valid point for our, our like audience in that case that want to like make their store better. But at the end of the day, we know that businesses making mistakes when they're really setting up their store they do some of the small mistakes but also bigger ones can you point out some of those mistakes sure so common mistakes um, start by navigating the minefield of some of those it's uh, it's not just about choosing the right theme or setting up the right product collections it's about getting a solid foundation that speaks to your brand and audience so remember still without a vision is like a ship without a rudder you know Critically, to understand the power of Shopify's flexibility combined with Everflow's prowess, use Shopify to craft your store's enthusiastic and functional backbone, and then let Everflow guide you through the performance tracking and partner management to ensure you're building on solid ground. Really important. Yeah, I think this is very important. I think the last 10 minutes that we spoke about, about identifying the problems, the causes, the impact, those are really uh, relevant for everyone looking, you know, like to, to build some kind of like a shop online in that case. But let's go a bit more, you know, to your specialty, Shopify, in that case. Like what does business need to create a Shopify store? Okay, nice, cool. So I think it's embarking on a journey, you know, and it's more than just a product. So again, starting with the vision, it's a clear understanding of your brand, your target audience, and the unique value that you offer. From there, it's about choosing the right Shopify plan. There's a lot of plans out there. 
making sure that what you need today is what you're going to need in 12 months time and then making sure that the plan is going to flex they change their offers so we keep abreast of what's going on in there as well um, true essence it's a compelling story though that connects your products to your customers and you bring this to life through stunning visuals engaging descriptions and a seamless shopping experience in that all underpinned by robust data analytics as well you'll get those through overflow and you get those through shopify as well i think that uh, when we start the business one of our main goals is to scale right because we don't do business just to have a store and in that case like i would like to understand from your perspective what metrics should a business monitor to evaluate the store growth and a plan to scale definitely and it's You've got to kind of go down the pathway. It's more than just instinct. It's about insight. So we've got to be looking at key metrics like customer acquisition cost. What are we putting into drawing the people in? The customer lifetime value. You might just be starting off, but you've got to start thinking around that lifetime and how do I exhibit that from the customer? The conversion rate. So is the site converting? So, so important. Average order value as well. How, how am I getting the order value to increase each time? So a range of products with your upselling, um, your post-purchase upsells as well, just trying to push that average value back up. Um, and you kind of trying to retain people as well within the site. So how are you pulling them back in? So there's a narrative of your store's journey together with um, the metrics that, again, you get those kind of lights and data fields from. That gives you clarity on your performance and it should guide your strategic decision because it's actual real data. Got feel sometimes, but always go back with data and insights in every time. Yeah, and we know that at the end of the day, we're doing a, we're opening a store. We want people to come in, but more of that, we want people to return to the store. Mm. So in that case, like what key functions should the business have in their store to allow generate more repetitive like clients to come and check again and create higher AVOs. Yeah, so for sure. So it's transforming those one-time shoppers into loyal customers and boosting that AOV. It's not just about selling it, but it's about engaging. And with Shopify, you can bring in subscription models. That's a really good way of getting people come back to you time and time again within your product. You can set them to the lifetime of the supply of the product. So you're timing things right and making it part of people's lives in their loyalty program. So you're bringing people back, rewarding them for shopping with you. And there's some really neat functionality to bring in with the Shopify piece in there. And then that personalized marketing, making it feel a very personal experience when they're coming into your site, even, you know, your name is appearing, there's offers that are tailored to you and all of these things can be calibrated and executed. Um, and it's, that comes back down to tracking again, what individuals are doing through your group, following your segmentation and putting soft offers out there that are right for those people. So you're creating an ecosystem and at every point somebody interacts with your platform, it adds value to them. And it, then that creates that combination of a community. So you get repeat customers. They're not just purchasers, they become advocates. So that holy grail of those five-star trust pilots and things, and people actually net promoting your products comes to life. Yeah, I believe, you know, those uh, uh, people who are part of the lawyer program become kind of ambassadors for those mm -hmm. brands. Like, I right. like specific brands and, you know, like my sunglasses or like shirts yeah. that I like to go. And I'm saying, yeah, I'm wearing it proudly. So I totally understand, you know, mm -hmm. why business that will take a lot of time to uh, and efforts to spend to bring those like uh, shoppers again and again in that case and to, um, to circle it around and getting like more from their friends or their family back to the store. So this is definitely something important to have uh, in mind. And, you know, we're talking a lot about Shopify, but there's uh, other type of stores in that case, but we're calling this like a top of the shelf solution. And, yeah. you know, like it's okay, it's nice, but it's not personalized, it's not customized. So what would be the importance of customization in that case? Sure. And I think, put, you know, personalization, it's it's that thing you've got mass industry and within that you still get personalization. And because even the best 
off the shelf solutions have got limits to them. So customization becomes the ally of the e-commerce retailer or the brand that's putting it out there. They bring in tailored themes. You know, it's a customized, personalized design. And that brings to life and reflects the uniqueness of the brand. Um, we're building in customized apps to do specific problem solving for customers that are unique in there. Um, it allows the store not just to meet someone's expectation, but actually really exceed them. And they have that much better user journey from that. It's kind of that bridge between the possible and the extraordinary. Right. And turning Shopify stores from spaces, spaces of transaction to experiences of transformation. I think uh, this is very unique approach in my opinion. Uh, and as I said, I think this is why you're so uh, specialized in this field, you know, with all the experience that you have in tech, bring it to e-commerce, bring it to Shopify. And for that, I would like to ask how does Shoptivity help business to scale up their store or app? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, this is all about amplifying your store's potential. You know, you chart your course towards scalability. Um, and that's where Shoptivity Labs emerges as a, an ally with because we've got deep integration with Shopify um, and we offer a suite of tools and insights that help work again collaboratively, as we said earlier, and take your store to its next big steps. Um, we look at enhancing product discovery to optimizing checkout flows, use journeys. Shoptivity Labs, we work to refine every touch point, you know, just to ensure that somebody's store isn't just growing, but it actually be flourishing either. That's good. But now I have a serious question for you, and I think our audience really need to pay attention to this next one. So for brands and companies that are ready to launch their new store in a few months, what steps can they take to avoid uh, future scalability issues? Cool. I think I'm going to bring Rich back in on the conversation as well. All right, he's, he's been far too, far too quiet, Eden, and I don't well, like it when. He's... Yeah, I am being far too quiet. So you know, scalability building for tomorrow—that's where big mistake people make all the time. They, they 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 think about getting live now, getting live quick. Yeah, but they don't match what they're doing to their business plan. All businesses have a business plan. So a brand on the cusp of launching, you know, um, foresight is the greatest tool. By foresight, I mean thinking about tomorrow. Yeah, not just today. Yeah. So you need to start with the scalable infrastructure. Yeah. So don't build something. Yeah. That is not going to grow with you. Don't produce something that is not going to grow with you. You know, opt for a Shopify plan and third party apps that are going to grow with you. Offer something like Everflow. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm a big advocate of Everflow. One of the reasons I'm a big advocate of Everflow is once you start selling stuff using an affiliate network, Everflow is more affordable than other platforms. Yeah. People don't quite get that, and it's and it's and it's thinking about these things moving forward. What's good value? What's going to work with me? Yeah, what's going to work? What's going to go with me to the next level? Because you're thinking about today, yeah, and and but you know, yesterday's important, but tomorrow is just as important. I think you need to automate. You know, invest early in data analytics. Yeah, um, a lot of people don't. Yeah, um, but you really need to do that. Your data analytics is like your customer surveys in the real world, yeah. Um, and you need to, you need, you need to analyze that data. You need to use it, and you need to feed back the analytics back into how you're altering your site. Automate wherever possible, yeah. And as many automations as you can build into it, yeah. And and build for, like not everybody is going to be like this, but a lot of brands have got ambition, yeah. So build for international expansion. It's not that difficult, yeah plan for it because what you don't want to do is build something then decide find out you've been fantastically successful burn it and then have to burn it to the ground and start again yeah so you know also as well think about enterprise and enterprise solution you know one of the problems with um um a number of a, a number of e-commerce platforms or solutions out there is they're not enterprise they can't deal with vast amounts of users they have security problems they also have constant and ongoing and expensive maintenance problems yeah so you need to think about cost you need to think about afford you need to think about ease of use ease of maintenance yeah but you also need to think about well if i decide i'm going to launch in holland yeah or the netherlands sorry as i should actually call it in the netherlands how's that going to happen is it easy do i need to build a new site yeah 
what what do I do next? Yeah, and and but if you plan all that beforehand, even if you don't do it, but if you know it's going to happen, you can prepare for it. And I think, I think it's also important, Rich, just to add in there that you know whatever data you're getting is it's making decisions again off that data, in insight, insight, data driven decisions that take yeah. your business in that right direction. Yeah. And you keep, as Richie's saying, keep a really good handle on that and keep making your decisions based on fact. Yeah, it's, we, we call it a manifesto for success. You know, mm -hmm. like if you're looking, your data and the insights you get from that data, yeah, are something that you need to be putting back into the site. I think that's the other mistake a lot of people make. They think I've built it. That's, that's it. it. That's yeah, it. you've got you've got to work it, breathe it. You've got to build yeah. the brand loyalty that brings that unprecedented yeah. growth. If you're and, not, and you, 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 really yeah, you need to work with a developer that is going to stick with you because the idea that you build it once and you leave it for three years without doing anything to it, yeah, is just crazy. Mm -hmm. You know. You need to be, you need somebody who's going to be constantly there changing things. Does this convert better? Does that convert better? Does this help me retain a customer? Is this the right app to use? No, no, we should be using this. Yeah. It's a constant state of evolution. Yeah. Based on the data and the insights you're getting back from your analytics. And that evolution never stops. Never, ever, ever. That's uh, that's uh, totally interesting. I would say, like you know, like you answering this question, I'm saying, okay, but what about my tech stack then? How do I choose my tech stack in the right way? You know, like uh, compared to what you mentioned now, maybe I have the app or I have the store, but I need to build around it. So it's just like a follow up question that I'm thinking that I really yeah. would be useful to to understand it better. Again, and I think we have a very consultative approach in terms of how we work. So you know how what is the best way to do fulfillment yeah now we get startups come to us they don't have fulfillment they don't have any idea of what they're going to do and how they're going to do that yeah so how's that going to work how fulfillment's going to work what type of loyalty programs are they going to run do they want a loyalty program what is their customer demographic what are their customers like yeah how do, how do they get repeat sales etc 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 and it's understanding you know what the product is what they're trying to achieve they're trying to sell it, how it's going to work, what's, what is the benefit of the product, what, what, what makes your product unique, yeah, and then how we can work that back in. So, and I think, you know, what quite often people do as well is they get, uh, they get rightly obsessed with the design, yeah, and what it looks like, and the brand. And rightly, they do, because it's your shop window out to the world. But you also need to be obsessed with how it works behind what tools you're putting into it what partners you've got how scale of it is yeah um uh, where you are going in the future yeah what the customer journey is like and where is it working and where is it not working the idea that you're going to build something yeah and there is an immediate assumption that the customer journey is perfect from day one is just suppose it's just not true yeah every customer is unique up to a point yeah and, and you need to understand, based on your product and the way they interact with your product and the way they interact with your offer and your website, you need to understand how that customer journey works. And I can guarantee you, you will need to make changes. So you need a developer who understands what changes need to be made, yeah, and how you can make that. The, the idea of, like, never doing split testing is, is, is crazy. You know, like, why would you not want to test what's good, what's bad, yeah? The idea of of not looking at how your checkout is working on a daily basis yeah it's crazy and you'd be surprised how many suppliers how many how many how many customers don't do this yeah and also how it's interacting with the different types of marketing you're using especially affiliate marketing this is the other problem yeah people think i want to use affiliates i really want to use affiliates let's get an affiliate Let, let's let's get onto everflow get my developer to integrate everflow into the back of the site and then work out and then and it will come, yeah? And the affiliates will just drive traffic and I will be a millionaire in the morning, yeah? No, yeah, your site needs to, you need to adapt and work your site. You need to produce specific landing pages, long form landers. The offer needs to be right for the affiliate and the affiliate concern. So you need a developer who not only will work closely with a platform like Everflow and understand people like yourselves and what you want, but also be able to work with those affiliate groups because these affiliate groups, or the successful ones anyway, have specific requirements and needs. Yeah, and they need a dev team, 
yeah, at this end that's going to understand that, yeah, and not frustrate that affiliate because if they get frustrated, they'll be moving on to somebody else who doesn't frustrate them where they feel they can earn the money. That's a good one. And like in the previous chat I did, like uh, I spoke a lot about A-B testing and also here, right? Like you do so much customization, you really need to test what it's working as well working. And when you have a developer, you have the affiliate, you need to mitigate all of those needs and thoughts to one place. So uh, how do you usually work on it? Neil, do you want to do this or do you want me to do that one? Well, you want to take that one, Rich. You're in full flight. <laughs> so, you know, in, in terms of in terms of A-B testing or split testing, you know, it's it's an art, not science. Yeah. And, and it absolutely is. And it's and it's the it's, it's an art stroke science of incremental gains. Yeah. So I, I there was a guy who ran a cycling team in the UK called Dave Brailsford, who ran one of the most successful cycling, international cycling teams in the world. And what he said was, yeah, improvement is based on incremental gains. Yeah. You are not going to make yeah, enormous changes yeah, through split testing. What you need to be looking, looking to do is making small changes and small successes. And they build up. Yeah. So perhaps you're looking at changing the color of an offer. Yeah. So you put an offer up there. So the offers currently are in the offers in a button that's red. Let's try it in yellow. Yeah. And then we split test and we see, well, what converts better, the red or the yellow? Yeah. The text, the SEO. Yeah. How that's working, what's driving it in. Small changes. Yeah. And small, but what they do is they add up. Yeah. Um, I think one of the mistakes people make with all of these things, yeah, is the idea that, it, that, that you'll make enormous gains. Yeah. By just doing one small thing. Yeah. That, that is not how it works at all. You will make small gains by doing small things. But if you do lots and lots of small things, and also you come back to the analytics, you look at the data. Everything is informed by the data. If you're not looking at the data, and that includes the data you're getting back from Everflow, yeah? So you're looking at the conversion rates for traffic affiliate affiliates um, are driving, yeah? And if you <coughs> link that in with Shopify uh, analytics and also the analytics you're getting through things like you know, GA, Google Analytics, various other Hotjar or MS Clarity or things along those sort of lines. Yeah. If you're looking at that as a piece, yeah, you'll, you, all of a sudden you'll get a book. Yeah. You'll under, it will all come together and you'll understand exactly what your customer reaction to the different types of customer. How does a customer driven by an affiliate work? How does a customer that's driven by organic traffic work? How does a customer that's driven by email marketing campaigns work? Yeah. How do they interact with the site? And it's understanding that, which is the important part. Very interesting. Thank you very much, uh, Rich, like, uh, to explain it to, to all of us. And uh, I would like to thank both of you, Neil and Rich, for like uh, joining me here today and just like great fireside chat. And we have a lot of learning and things to think about. But if we're looking like for all this chat, what is the thing that you would like people remember the most like a week from now? Uh, my email address so they can contact me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, Shocktivity Labs is your partner, but, you know, jo joking aside, um, just kind of aligning your tech stack beside the APIs with the business plan. Everything you're trying to do, just get everything aligned and well thought through first. Foresight is your friend in this one. Uh, make sure your tech that you're investing in has got the ability to grow with you. Don't let it stifle you. You're on a you're on a real roll. Twelve months time, and suddenly like you hit a dead end because the tech won't go with you anymore. So just make sure it's there for the journey with you. Keep reacting, data testing, data testing. As Rich was just talking about, make sure you keep testing, teasing, little incremental steps. Um, because in the long term, it's going to save you time, and money if you're doing things in that smaller way and you're testing little things. And, you know, pick a tech supplier um, that's there for the long haul with you. Um, we, we find that collaborative approach really rewarding from our side. Um, we get to work with some fantastic businesses who are really going places. And it, it's a real pleasure even working with them and, you know, seeing them grow and being part of their story and journey as well. And, you know, a, a lot of suppliers like that, but, you know, we genuinely love that end of the business as well. Uh, Rich, I don't know if there's anything you want to add that you'd like people to remember. Um, yeah, I think, you know, in terms of 
you know, one thing I'd like people to take away. Whoops, I think that's probably me again. Yeah, one thing I'd like people to take away from this is, you know, like it's more than skin deep. Yeah, people like like I said, people get obsessed by how it looks, and that's fine. That, that that is absolutely fine, and your site does need to look great. But you need to have that underpinning customer journey. You need to understand. You need the analytics. You need you need to have that foundation that your site is built on, and then a great looking site will work. But you need everything underneath it. Yeah, because without it, you've just got a good looking website. <laughs> that, that's a good one so in order to people to contact you in the future what is the best way to do it uh so i'll i'll provide you um do you want me to put my email in the chat yeah uh, or uh, would you just like me to give you your email address if not they can contact me on linkedin yeah uh, richard marshall you can see my ugly face on linkedin but i'll provide you with my email address here as well so um people could just contact me direct um uh, is that how you prefer to do it yeah that's a good way and i can also share that like uh, on the uh, partner directory at everflow they can uh, uh, find you activity labs and can connect and they of course approach us uh, to make the introduction yeah. and um, yeah i'm just putting it into there you go um uh, it's in the chat now, yeah. And if they contact me on that, that'd be that'd be fantastic. Or if they want to, they want to message me on LinkedIn, they can message me on LinkedIn. Or they could try to stalk me on Facebook if they want. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Rich Neil. Thank you so much for this uh, session and those learnings. Looking forward to continue our like collaboration and partnerships and uh, more great things ahead. Have Thanks a good evening, much. everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye bye. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Cheers, bye.